I've been enjoying playing with the Tang Nano 9K FPGA development board. I saw a Tang Nano 20K board available at a good price on Amazon, so I bought one of those also. This video is about how the 9K and the 20K differ, and I'll show my Pico RV32 RISC-V core project running on the 20K. Here's the Tang Nano 20K board. It's physically smaller than the 9K and fits nicely on a standard breadboard. The Tang Nano 20K uses a different FPGA. It uses the GW2AR-18. The big difference is that this FPGA has about 2.4 times the resources, so it supports larger projects. Also, the 20K's FPGA integrates an SRAM instead of a PSRAM. In other ways, the FPGAs on the two boards are very similar. They integrate mostly the same hard IP blocks, so they are fairly compatible. Getting started with the Tang Nano 20K is almost the same as getting started with the 9K. The difference is the FPGA that you have to select. So you create a project, and then at this point, pick GW2AR, and then the FPGA you want is this top one. It's the QFN88 package with the SD RAM. Also, the pins for the buttons and LEDs are different. I'll show you the new pins later. But the 20K and the 9K are similar enough that you might benefit from viewing my video on getting started with the 9K. See the link below. The rest of this video will highlight other differences. The FPGAs may be similar, but there are substantial board level differences. In particular, the Nano 20K adds a bunch of extra stuff on the board connected to the FPGA. For example, there's a WS2812B LED. That's one of those individually addressable RGB LEDs. And I wrote a controller for that. I'll show you later. And there's this uh, audio DAC that connects to a speaker via a fairly inconvenient connector, actually. And that's driven from the FPGA using I2S protocol. So it's digital audio. And let's see, and then the there's a BL616 that provides the USB connectivity and the UART. And that's a more sophisticated chip than is on the 9K. In particular, it has a processor that runs a firmware that controls an external clock generation chip. And this chip uh, exposes three clocks connected to pins on the FPGA. And the first one is special. It connects to pin 10, which is a global clock pin. Uh, of the FPGA. And so that means when you use this pin for a clock, it uses the clock routing resources of the FPGA, and that's better for having a, a more accurate clock with less delay variation and such. And um, I'll, I'll point out that the 27 megahertz CAN loss oscillator is still present, just like on the 9K, but this is not connected to one of those global clock pins. And and let's see, the, there's actually a downside to all this extra stuff. The Tang Nano 9K actually has more unencumbered exposed pins, meaning pins that aren't connected to something that might interfere with your use of them. So you get somewhat fewer pins with the Tang Nano 20K, but, but you get this other stuff to play with. Let's explore the clock generation chip some more. So I've got a small project open here, and what it's doing that's important is connecting the generator chip clock zero to an external pin, clock zero out, and then clock one to clock one out, so we can view them on the oscilloscope here on the upper right. And the pins used are uh, pin 10 is for clock zero, and pin 11 is for clock one. So now let's build this real quick, and we'll see a warning. See, generic routing resource will be used for clock signal clock one. And that's because pin 11 is not a global clock pin input. Pin 10, pin 10 is, and that's why using pin 10 is a good idea. Now let's load the FPGA program. All right. And to see the clocks, we have to enable them. And for that, you connect a terminal emulator to the FPGA using the USB-C and to get into the mode where you can enter commands to the 616 chip, you do control X followed by control C followed by enter and you get this prompt. And so now I could use the PLL CLK command to enable clock zero. So I say cap capital O zero equals one meg. And now clock zero is producing a signal. To make this setting permanent, I can add a minus S. 
And so now it says save success. And this means that the clock generator will continue to produce this output on clock zero, even after the FPGA is power cycled. Now let's enable clock one. So PLL CLK01 equals something say 11 megahertz. So now we see that clock. Now I'm gonna turn that to one megahertz. And you see something curious. It looks like the phase is not aligned. And, but if I do that command again, it becomes aligned. And maybe the lesson here is using this facility, maybe you're not sure what the phase alignment of the signals will be. And by the way, as far as I can tell, this is the only way to control the clock generation chip. You can't do it from the FPGA. Anyway, that's a, a demonstration of controlling the clock generation chip. Here's the pinout. You can find the main diagram on the SciPed wiki. Just Google Tang Nano 20K. I've annotated mine on the left with pin numbers for many onboard resources. Notice that all pins are shown as 3.3 volts. That's different from the Tang Nano 9K where some pins are shown as 1.8 volts. On the top left, you can see that the 27 MHz CAN oscillator is on pin 4. The buttons are on pins 88 and 87, and the switch polarity is reversed relative to the 9K. Pressing the switch gives value high. The WS2812B data in signal is on pin 79. I made a video that explains how these addressable RGB LEDs work. I'll put a link below. You can also see the controller I created for my Pico RV32 project. The PLL clock gen pins are 10, 11, and 13, with 10 being the one connected to the global clock pin. 13 also connects to the BL616, so maybe avoid that one unless you do some more research. Pin 77 is also a global clock pin. It should be a good choice for external clock sources. You can see that these pin assignments are very different from the pin numbers on the Tang Nano 9K, so project constraint files must be adjusted. The Ys on my diagram indicate pins that are encumbered only by being routed to connectors. If you don't plug anything into the connector, these pins should be good choices for breadboard use. Next, I'll demonstrate the Pico RV32 RISC-V project that I updated for the Tang Nano 20K. The main changes are pin numbers. I am using the clock zero signal from the clock gen chip, so I removed the use of the RPLL on the FPGA. The button polarities are reversed, and I added the WS2812B controller. I'll put this diagram on the GitHub for the Pico RV32 project. See the link below. Here's the project for the Pico RV32 based mini SOC on the Tang Nano 20K. The Pico RV32 is a RISC-V soft core that is good for FPGAs. This project is very similar to what I did on the Tang Nano 9K, so I will not go into any detail. I'll put links to the 9K videos below. The biggest change is that I added a controller for the WS2812B RGB LED. Here's the Verilog for it. But I won't take any time to dive into this. You can read the Verilog on GitHub, and if you're not familiar with this kind of LED, see my videos on them. The project's already running, so if I bring up my terminal emulator and press, press a key, it shows a list of commands. This is software running on the RISC-V core. So, for example, if I press the I command, that increments the value of the register that's driving the conventional LEDs. So, every time I press that, you should be seeing the LEDs change. The program implements several tests. So like if I press E, that checks that the Indian is as I expected. If I press M, that does a simple memory test. But the biggest change is the control of the RGB LED. So if I type L, I get to enter six hex digits and that controls the color of the LED. So if I do like 30, 30, 30, that sets the R, G, and the B values to hex 30 um, out of FF, and that should make it look white. If I do just 30, that should look bluish, although I think my camera's not very good. If I do 30, 0, 0, that should look green. And if I do 30, 0, 0, 0, 0, that should look red. So that's an example of the RGB LED being controlled by this project. Before we end, let's take a look at the resource utilization and timing. So I'll open the place and route report and scroll down and I'll pause here, or you can pause the video and take a look at these in detail. But you can see that the percentages are much lower than they were on the 
Tang Nano 9K, and that's because the FPGA on the 20K has more resources. So it's good for larger projects. And we'll open the timing analysis report, and we'll see that it's all blue. So we met timing. It calculated a max clock of 76 megahertz. And some of these slacks are still showing quite a bit of slack. So the timing looks pretty good. I think that's enough on the Pico RV32 project. See the links below. I'll end this video here. I hope you found it a useful introduction to the Tang Nano 20K. Thanks for watching.